Hello, hello, welcome to another community news update from 3D Jake, bite-sized information on what is going on in 3D printing right now. You're currently enjoying the view of my office in sunny Graz. It is sunny outside, it's very warm, I hate it. There are people outside drinking cool drinks. I hate them too. I hate all of you. So firstly, doing the rounds on the online printosphere is this new program called HueForge. This just came out about a week ago. And if you haven't heard of it already, it can turn a color photo into an STL derived from a height map with a recommended list of colored filaments so that you can easily create full color prints. It uses an M600 command to basically stop the printer halfway through so you can change colors. And if you're not familiar with it, this is an example. So this is a little Nyan cat made of one, two, three, four, five colors. And another one here that we did a while ago, which is a little maker badge of a, a rather unfortunate hand. Now these are basically just one color that's stacked on the other and it's important to do this because you don't want any bleed through of the previous color uh, that's a disadvantage when it comes to these but it is an advantage when it comes to hue forge it uses this so that you can blend your colors together to form a whole spectrum of colors even if you're only using three or four different colors so here's an example of what i mean with the hue forge tool we have a, a black a blue a lighter blue and a white filament here and you can see there's a beautiful gradient with the contours uh between the white and the the, the blue here if you can see there's the lighter blue above the dark blue there uh, and the first layers are quite dark because it's shining a lot of the dark blue through but as it builds up it becomes lighter until it gets to the lighter blue and then those layers build up and become even stronger until they go to the white which kind of overpowers it a bit um, uh, but it has a beautiful contour look to it and I can't wait to try this on uh, something like uh, ABS or uh, PVB filament which can be dissolved in uh, alcohol or with, with ABS it's acetone of course uh, to really get this blend going it's gonna look super I can't wait to try it we're gonna be playing with this for a while first thing we have to do is to get all of the colors of our eco PLA filament put onto the library of the program uh, it's important to get this right because different filaments have a different amount of translucency to it so we really want to get that right um, but stay tuned we're going to be doing a follow-up video uh, next week or the week after and we'll see how we get on next up is polymaker silk filament and this is a really nice filament we have 27 new colors in the shop really gorgeous sheen to it um, but it also comes in cardboard spools for those of you who are eco-conscious and if you do use cardboard spools a lot and you are also using one of those printers that have a uh, spool holder that uses bearings underneath to support the filament you might have noticed that cardboard is kind of uh, crap when it comes to these spool holders so someone on printables has uh, designed this beautiful spool uh, adapter for cardboard spools so if you have something like the bamboo lab uh, x1c i think that one has this, those kind of uh, spool holders then this is perfect for you no more issues with getting your spool to uh, rotate around those bearings nice so of course we got to talk about the new e3d high flow revo nozzles that just came out recently we have them in our shop and they have bore sizes up to 1.4 millimeters across and these go beautifully with their new 60 watt heater core if that takes your fancy definitely does for me when using a high flow pla on the 1.4 millimeter nozzle with the 60 watt heater core you can go up to almost 40 millimeters cubed per second which is pretty good that's not bad and considering you can take off the nozzle in 30 seconds as well that's that's not bad so we now have the normal revo the obsidian and the high flow we're almost at a set but we are missing the abrasive resistant high flow nozzles because the high flow nozzles are made of uh, brass mm. which is unfortunate i'm really looking forward to when that day will come uh, until then we can just use bontex CHT nozzles which are, are awesome uh, and they go up to 1.8 millimeters which is cool uh, but right now, uh, they're not quite as versatile as a Revo hot end and a belt full of nozzles. Okay, Prusa Slicer 2.6 is finally out of the alpha stage and the new features in its totality are organic supports, automatic support painter and print checker, a text embossing tool, an improved cut tool, a measurement tool, a dynamic overhang speed tool, automatic anchoring of bridging infill, improved ensure vertical shell thickness and multi-tool slicing improvements. Hmm. I have been absolutely loving Prusa Slicer 2.6's alpha release. Uh, we had six of them, I think, uh, and mostly for the pretty and useful organic supports. They are very, very, very pretty, and uh, they're, I guess they're useful too. Yeah. 
But in the last few months, another slicer has been getting popular, uh, and this is Orca Slicer, which is an offshoot, a fork of uh, Bamboo Lab Slicer, which I think also is based on Prusa Slicer. Yeah. Uh, this slicer has better compatibility with other printers. It has a nice user interface, and it also has a lot of calibration tests, which are really cool. But what I really, really like is that they now have a feature for pressure advance. You can adjust pressure advance or linear advance, if you want to call it that. Uh, in the slicer, whereas before with like Prusa Slicer, for instance, you had to manually input the G-code command into the start G-code and that was it. Now, well, it wasn't super difficult, but it's nice to have a really, really fluid interface where you can change this for whatever filament you're using, because uh, those of you who might know, it might be different depending on what filament you use. Uh, PLA is not the same as TPU when it comes to pressure advance. Next up is Zodiac nozzles, and if you're not familiar with these, well, these are also Austrian-based, but they were bought by uh, E3D last year, and E3D now have those nozzles in their shop, and they're also in our shop, of course. We have the CRB nozzles and the Pro nozzles, and these come in standard V6, Volcano, or in the Mark 8 form. The Pro version being able to go up to 500C. Definitely a premium product, but useful for those who need a bit more oomph when it comes to their nozzles. Okay, guys, that just about wraps everything up for this week's community news. If you have a story that you'd like us to feature in another episode, then let us know. Write us a comment below or send us an email, and we'll see you guys next time. Later.